Hey everybody, welcome again to my kitchen. I'm just trying to get this notification off of my screen. What's it doing there, right? <laughs> well, welcome back. It must be Tuesday because we're back here again. So glad to see everybody here. Um, today we are going to make a really lovely dish. Uh, it could be a dessert, it could be breakfast. Um, but it's a paleo bread pudding. And the reason I call it a paleo bread pudding is because it has no grains in it and it has no dairy added to it as well. It's made with almond flour and an egg and a few other ingredients that make it just taste delicious and yummy. I've made this several times over the years and um, there's a couple ways that you can do it. One is the conventional way in the oven which I actually love doing it that way. I do prefer to bake in the oven over using the other method, which is a microwave. But sometimes either you don't have time or like it's been, it gets real hot and you don't feel like putting on that oven. So that's why I thought I would show you both ways of doing this. And by the way, this is a lovely way if you are uh, looking for a little snack in the afternoon that's not too sweet. Um, it's a great way to curb some of those sugar cravings that you might be having. Um, hey, Kathy, how are you? Good to see you. Um, so yes, so great for curving cravings. If you're looking for a little group support and maybe some other tips on how to do that, uh, I am hosting a 10 day sugar cleanse with my uh, friend and fellow health coach, Mary Ellen Zhang, that starts September 8th. If you're interested in joining us, just IM me or send me an email, say you'd like to join and you're in. You'll get a daily newsletter with tips and suggestions for both eating habits and lifestyle habits that will help you kick those sugar cravings for good, for better health as well. So let's get back, speaking of better, better health, let's get back to this delicious recipe. So I mentioned that you could do it either by oven or in the microwave. I actually did do one earlier today in the oven. So I'm gonna show you when we're done how they both look. So this is a really a one bowl dish that you can make, but I like to put mine in a ramekin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mix it up. This is just like a little cereal bowl here. I'm gonna mix it up first in here and then transfer it over into my ramekin. You can mix it up in the bowl and just leave it in the bowl if you'd like. Because I have the ramekin, I'm just going to sprinkle and lightly grease my ramekin and I'm just gonna use my fingers um, to just lightly spread that oil around in the interior of the ramekin. That ensures that it won't stick, makes it easier to clean up afterwards as well. So, I'm gonna start by adding into my bowl now my dry ingredients. I'm gonna use some almond flour. Sometimes I like to use the pulp that is from my, that I have left over from when I make my almond milk. Um, but in this case, I'm just gonna use the almond flour that I have here. And I'm going to use three tablespoons of almond flour. And then to that, I'm going to add a half teaspoon of baking powder, not baking soda. I made it the other day with baking soda by accident. It tastes terrible. Do not use baking soda, <laughs> baking powder. So I'm gonna add a half teaspoon of baking powder I just grabbed the wrong container, I wasn't thinking. That's what happens when you're trying to do too many things at once, right? So I've added my half teaspoon of baking powder. I'm just gonna add a pinch of salt. I've got some sea salt here. This is Redmond's Real Salt that I like to use. And I am just going to give that a little stir. I'm even just gonna use my measuring spoon just to stir that up a little bit, just to mix the dry ingredients together before I add my wet ingredients. So to this then, I'm going to add two tablespoons of my applesauce. I'm just gonna clean off my measuring spoon here. 
Um, I have here some organic unsweetened applesauce. I like to use unsweetened for this just to keep the sweet level down on the dish. Plus we're gonna be adding a lot of natural sweeteners um, with the applesauce and with our fruit. What's nice about this dish is you can use any seasonal fruit that you have available. So it's a great way to use up some fruit. Um, I haven't tried it with banana, but I bet you it would be great if you have ripe bananas that you wanna get rid of. Um, this morning I made my dish with peaches. I have a bunch of uh, local peaches that um, are, were getting really ripe and I thought, I'm just gonna try it. So I did do that. Here's, here, I just used a half of a peach for the one dish. By the way, this makes one serving, okay? You could share it, but sometimes it's hard to do that, I know. <laughs> okay, so I added my applesauce. I'm going to add in one large egg. I got some great eggs from the uh, farmer's market. I'm very happy, oh, I just broke a little eggshell in there. Okay, there we go. Uh, always love to be able to get those free range chicken eggs when I can. So we have one large egg. I'm going to add um, a teaspoonful of vanilla extract. Uh, this is organic from Whole Foods. So I'm adding a teaspoon of my vanilla. And then I'm going to add just a little touch of honey. You don't need to add this. Um, it, I think it depends on how sweet the fruit is that you're going to be adding in. I'm adding a teaspoon. Um, something I just was reading about with honey, this is a local honey actually, thank you to my sister and brother-in-law. They have their own beehives, so I have some honey from them. But I took it out this morning and it was all crystallized. And uh, what I was reading is the better your honey the more likely it is to crystallize because it means that it has natural sugars in it. So um, what I did with this was I just put it in a bowl of warm water and it did, as you can see, liquefy again. But you can still see that there's some crystals along the side there. So I am going to do uh, a teaspoon of that. You know what, I'm just gonna, instead of squeezing it, I'm just gonna take the lid off so it pours more quickly more easily, especially since it is very thick. Probably because it has all that sugar in it. Well, but all natural from their yard. Okay, so I'm gonna add a teaspoon of that honey. And I thought that I would add a little bit of lemon zest. Now this is optional. But it just occurred to me that um, I'm gonna make it with blueberries because I was lucky enough to get blueberries from the farmer's market. And I actually am gonna add in a few of my ground cherries. If you saw my earlier post this week, I actually have been harvesting these little sweet little things. Have you ever seen them before? This is the first year that I've been growing them. And they are in the tomato family. They look like tomatillos, little miniature tomatillos, but when you open them up, there's a sweet little berry inside. Mm, that's one that didn't get, get into the recipe. But very sweet, um, different flavor. So what I thought I would do is open up a few and throw those into my blueberries and mix them up. I have made the blueberries and the ground cherries together before and they make a nice blend, but straight blueberries is good. Combination of blueberries, peaches would be great. And I know that with blueberries, lemon tastes really good. So that's why I thought I would add in a little bit of lemon rind, like maybe like the zest of, of uh, maybe about, eh, maybe about, eight to a quarter of a teaspoon, not much. Zest has a lot of flavor to it. Getting those wonderful natural oils from the lemon. So, you know, maybe about, maybe about a quarter of a teaspoon added in there. Now, 
I'm just going to, I'm going to use a bigger spoon here, but I'm just going to use my measuring spoon and I'm just going to mix that all together until it's a nice, smooth batter. I'm going to show you the consistency of it so that you know how liquidy it is. So here is the consistency of the batter. But it's nice and smooth. And I just want to make sure that that egg is all mixed in. And to that then, oh, you know what? I've got a little bit left of this honey there. I'm going to mix that in. Waste not, want not, right? All right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I have about a half cup of blueberries here and a few of those ground cherries. I'm going to add in, I'm going to hold back a little bit of those blueberries because I don't want to overflow my ramekin. But I find that just about a half cup is pretty good. And then if you want to see, I'm just going to mix that right up in there. And I'm going to take now my ramekin and just pour that in to the ramekin. Now here's the great part. If I was baking this, I would have preheated my oven to about 375, and you would need to bake this for 15 minutes. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. But, because I was talking about summertime and maybe not heating up the kitchen, I'm gonna show you what it looks like in the microwave. Let me show you what it looks like here now in the ramekin. You can see the batter is thick enough that the berries mix evenly in it. It doesn't sink to the ground. You don't want it so liquid that all the berries are at the bottom. All right, I'm going to stick this in the microwave for two minutes on high. All right, while that is cooking, Oh, so I just, I brought out banana in case you want to add a banana. I was wondering whether if even instead of the applesauce, if you just mashed up a banana, whether that would give you a good pudding as well. It, would, it wouldn't have a consistency that the berries give it, which is, is kind of nice, a little variability. But the other thing you can do is you can mix in some walnuts with this, any kind of nuts or seeds. Um, you can mix in um, like a combination with chia and, and whatnot. I have a recipe on my website called Evie's Breakfast Mix. You could substitute in a tablespoon of that in place of a tablespoon of one of the tablespoons of almond flour. Um, and that would give it a little bit of crunch. Um, any substitute for the applesauce, uh, Kathy's asking. Um, you know what, the applesauce is, is sometimes used as a substitute for eggs. So I think the, the reason that, it, that it's there is to help so you don't need to use more than one egg. Um, I would say that the uh, banana puree would be a substitute for the applesauce, okay? While we have that cooking in the microwave, why don't I show you what I baked earlier today. Oh, hold on, I got, let's see if I got another. Hi, Debbie. Um, can you substitute almond flour in any baking recipe that calls for plain flour? No, almond flour does not have the gluten. It does not have the ability to rise the same way as a, a wheat-based flour does. So you really need to um, explore a little bit and, and you know, practice a little bit with, with different combinations. I find that if I add a little bit of almond flour with tapioca, tapioca also has that ability to expand, that sometimes you get a good substitute for that um, as well. But you really do need to be very careful when substituting almond flour for regular wheat flour. All right. Um, oh, okay, so let me show you this, and then I'm gonna pull out the uh, pudding that I made in the microwave. So this is the pudding that I made earlier today in the oven. You're gonna see something. Okay, this is one side, this is the other side. <laughs> it did bubble over. You will find that that does tend to happen with this. But what I like about the puddings when they come out of the oven is that they get a nice brown crust on top. And you can see it sank 
with time as it cooled. When it came out, it had a nice dome on top. So it's almost like a souffle in that uh, regard that it does that. Let me show you. We have a little bubble over here on our uh, blueberries as well. But let me show you what our blueberry pudding looks like now. Let's see if it's, it's a little hot to touch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put it, hold it up like this. So you can really see. And you can, I don't know if you can see it's steaming, but mm, it doesn't brown the same way as the other does. But you can see that wonderful juice that's, that's flowing out of it. Now, what I like to do with this, you could put on additional fruit if you'd like, but what I have here that I like to do is I have a little bit of uh, cashew cream. So cashew cream is nothing more than um, equal parts of cashew and water mixed together with a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of, um, let's see, what else do I put in it? Lemon juice and a little bit of sweetener um, in it. Uh, to give it, and it tastes like a heavy whipped cream, really, um, like the, um, a clot, a lemon clot that you might get. Uh, oh, because I also put lemon in it, if I forgot to mention that. <laughs> okay, so what I like to do is I like to kind of break the surface and just put a little bit of that cream in there. And I can put a little bit on the other here. And, you know, if you're serving to guests, how easy is this, right? You know, it's just ready to go. Here, I'll put a little bit, of, little bit of a garnish on it. If you wanted to put a couple of walnuts on this, you know, for a garnish, that would be beautiful too. All right. Ooh, mm, yum. So... I'm gonna show you this side, which isn't as drippy. <laughs> All right, but the proof is in the pudding, right? Let's taste it and see how we did. You will find that the two have a different flavor. I'm gonna start with this one, which is uh, the one that I made earlier. This is the baked one. Um, the inside, uh, the middle is still a little bit of soft, which is why I call this a pudding because it doesn't totally uh, firm up. You can, if you overcook it, it can get tougher inside, but I like to leave it just for the 15 minutes in the oven. Mm -hmm. Oh, yum. That's just enough time for the peaches to get nice and soft. I put a little bit of cinnamon in this one too, which is really a nice combination with the peaches. So that's really, really nice. It's got a nice consistency, just like what you'd expect with a bread pudding. Now, let's look at the one that we just did. All right, it's a little hot, so I'm gonna put it down so I don't hurt myself. But again, remember the, the middle is uh, soft, but you, the outer level, you can see, me, I'm just gonna put, so I wanna hold it up. So you can see the consistency is just a little bit different. It's more spongy than the baked, but the middle is still soft, just like the other. And I'm gonna have to blow on this because I don't want to burn myself. Let me just put this down. Oh, I seem to have lost my lighting. Oh, I know why. Okay, all right. So let's try it. Mmm. Remember I said I added the lemon this time? It made such a difference. I really like it. It really brings out that blueberry. And I, the, um, the brown cherries just add a little bit of sweetness to it that's just a little bit different. But really it's the blueberry flavor that has come out really nicely. So I would definitely recommend using the, um, using the, the lemon zest in it. Uh, I have it as an option in the recipe, but it really works out nicely. So there you have it. We have two different versions. One conventional in the oven, and we have the one 
for the speedy recipe at right out of the microwave. Yes, Mary Ellen, blueberries and lemon are a great pair. I know. It's always good in uh, puddings, like even chia pudding, right? Or uh, blueberry and lemon chia pudding, pudding mix recipe. Anyway, so um, I hope you get to try these. And I hope you let me know maybe what fruit you used. Um, and if you're, you like these recipes, you like the type of recipes these are, healthy versions of, of foods that you might already be eating, stop by my website because I have a lot of other recipes under my recipe tab there. And as I mentioned earlier, Mary Ellen and I will be doing our 10 day sugar cleanse starting September 8th. And by joining, just send me an email or IM me ask requesting to be added to the group. We have a private Facebook group and um, we will be posting daily tips and suggestions on how you can help eliminate the amount of added sugars in your diet and maybe some lifestyle tips that might help you do that as well. So thanks, Kathy. It looks great. I will enjoy trying them. Oh, I'm so glad you're gonna try it. That sounds great. Wonderful. Well, thank you guys for stopping by. Hope I answered any, all of your questions. If you have any other questions, by all means, leave them down below in the comments section and I will get to them um, quickly. Have a great day. Enjoy. We'll talk to you soon and I'll see you next week in the kitchen. Take care now. Bye-bye.